since 9-11, the United States has been led by its nose, by the Zionists. To enter into one war after another. To the extent that the Zionists, the Zionists have now taken the United States to a stage where it is militarily up to its throat in wars. And uh, to start new wars, particularly with Iran, could eventually lead the United States to a situation where it will face military defeat. And I think this is what the Zionists want. So that you have the monetary collapse, the economic collapse, the unpopularity of the United States all over the world, and now the impending military defeat. And only Israel will be able to intervene to save the United States. That's what Israel wants. And when Israel intervenes to save the United States from military defeat, the writing is on the wall. The United States is no longer the ruling state of the world. The curtain is coming down on Pax Americana. And so the attack on Iran, I believe, is meant to provoke a series of walls which will eventually trap the United States and bring about its decline as a ruling state in the world. As soon as Israel attacks Iran, in my opinion, is that Israel is not going to attempt to deliver a knockout blow. Israel will attack Iran in order to commence wars that she hopes will follow one after the other. As soon as Israel attacks Iran, the first implication is that Iran is going to attack Iraq. And Iran is strategically poised, advantageously poised, to attack the United States in Iraq. As soon as Iran is attacked, she is around the world are going to respond with solidarity with Iran. And that includes the majority population of Iraq, which is Shia. What about the Sunni in Iraq? The Sunnis are waging a war against the United States. They want to get the United States out of Iraq. And if Iran attacks Iraq, the Sunnis are going to also intensify their attacks on the United States. And so the United States is going to be in a no-win situation in Iraq. You'll be facing enemies fighting you on all sides with no friends around you. None. I don't think, and I hope and pray, I don't think that NATO will succeed in getting the Turkish government to act so stupidly to attack Iran. I don't think it's going to happen. No. And let us pray that the Turkish government is not ruled by fools. And so NATO and the United States in particular are going to be faced with war in Iraq that they cannot win and they can lose. They can lose. And this is what Israel wants. This is what Israel wants. 
But there's another battlefront I want to turn to now. And this is where we need our military analysts. I wish we had some here tonight. That Iran is also likely to attack Bahrain. And it should not be difficult for Iran to take Bahrain. Bahrain cannot stand up to an attack from Iran. Bahrain is just across the water from Iran. I am suggesting to you that Iran is going to attack and take Bahrain. And if and, if and when Iran attacks and takes Bahrain, then there's a causeway between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia where you can drive back and forth. The road will be clear to Saudi Arabia. I am anticipating, and the Saudis probably already have their plans laid out very well, because they know what's going to happen. And Israel already knows what's going to happen. Then they're then going to turn to the United States to invoke whatever secret agreements they have of defense. The United States has to intervene in Saudi Arabia to protect Saudi Arabia from an attack from Iran. I think the Zionists in the U.S. Congress will ensure, even though the U.S. armed forces would not want to go in there, the Zionists in the U.S. Congress will ensure that American forces will have to enter into Saudi Arabia to face Iran. I'm also suspecting that they might do the same thing with Pakistan to force the Pakistani political leadership and military leadership to follow some secret agreement they probably already have to bring Pakistani troops into Saudi Arabia to face Iran. If that happens, number one consequence will be the United States will be facing two fronts where they're going to lose the war. The first front will be Iraq and the second front will be Saudi Arabia. And Pakistan will be facing defeat in Saudi Arabia and civil war in Pakistan. In order to save the United States from defeat, Israel will have to intervene. And so history will repeat itself for those who have been reading Jerusalem in the Quran. In order for the passage from Pax Britannica to Pax Americana to take place, do you remember? The First World War had to take place. And in the First World War, the Germans brought in their submarines. And Britain, the island, was marooned, surrounded by German submarines. And, the, and Britain would have lost the war. And at that critical moment, the Zionists then brought the United States into the war. Despite the efforts of men like uh, Henry Ford. And when the United States entered into the war, then Britain was saved from defeat. But the consequence of that was that Britain was no longer the ruling state in the world. And the transfer of power from Britain to the United States was well on the way as a consequence of that First World War. So I'm suggesting to you that the planning that is now taking place is a repeat of what happened then. That they're setting a trap for the United States. So that the United States is going to be led to a situation where it's going to be facing defeat in Iraq and in Saudi Arabia. These are my opinions. You don't have to accept them. And only one power in that region could intervene to save the United States from defeat, and that is Israel. And that would be the bell being rung. <laughs> that this is the passage of power now from Pax Americana 
to Pax Judaica. I think that for Russia and for China, an Israeli attack on Iran, particularly if it involves the use of nuclear weapons, would be recognized as a threshold being crossed. That so long as you did not cross that threshold, Russia and China were prepared to go along and continue in the Security Council of the United Nations, for example, cooperating and collaborating where possible in managing the affairs of the world. But once you cross that threshold, the implication for Russia and China is that you have crossed the point of no return. And that an attack on Iran is now going to inevitably lead to World War. That after Iran and after Pakistan and after the Arabs, the Zionists are going to turn on China and Russia to make sure that China and Russia also bend down their knees and accept Israel so that Israel can become the ruling state in the world. No Jew is going to accept Dajjal as the Messiah if Israel has not established its dominion over the whole world. No Jew will accept the Jal as the Messiah when he comes. If Israel at that time has not established its political and economic dominion over the world, and that includes Russia and China, and so Russia and China would know today is them, tomorrow it's us. And they're not going to wait until tomorrow to recognize that. The minute Iran is attacked, they will recognize that the threshold has been crossed and that they are now moving inevitably towards nuclear war.